Microsoft makes deals with AOL and Uber. Facebook wants to know what you turn down for, and HoloLens explodes in space. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 369 for Monday, June 29th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash technight. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Now let's get to today's big news. Microsoft dropped a few bombshells on the tech press today. The first was a new ad partnership with AOL and App Nexus. Joining us to talk about the Microsoft news is Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch, which we should probably say is owned by AOL. Indeed. Indeed. How are you doing, Alex? I'm now owned by Verizon, so it's kind of a corporate ladder of turtles all the way down. Yeah, so. I had some questions about that that I'm going to ask you that hopefully you can answer. Uh, what's going on with this deal between Microsoft and AOL? Uh, well, I didn't know that it was coming, so I think we're all scrambling a little bit uh, on this news. Dina Bass over at Bloomberg actually broke the news, and then Microsoft announced after she went out. I think they were caught a little pants down about this. Um, essentially, Microsoft is going to take over AOL's search business and become their uh, their main technology component. So Bing will now power AOL search uh, yes, that's still a thing, turns out. I didn't know. And uh, the company has also have done some ad deals as well, and Microsoft is uh, dropping about 1,200 employees onto uh, AOL as part of the deal. So my company is getting a lot bigger than some former Microsoft guys. And I think that the rough gist, so far as I can tell by reading what I have so far, is that Microsoft is just not trying to do as much stuff as it did before. Like, why is it in the ad business? You know, so wh why, why do that? Why not give someone else who has more dedication to that one specific cause a shot at doing it, and also maybe make some more money in the process. So that's the, that's the overall news. But um, there's some components with App Nexus, uh, with programmatic ads in Europe and so forth. But I mean, the big deal is like, you know, AOL and Microsoft are now very much uh, in business together. So, you know, you were quick to point out in your article that Verizon just bought AOL, but Microsoft didn't really mention, they didn't mention that at all in the blog post. I mean, do you think they were avoiding that fact? No, I, I, my guess is this deal was in the works for the last six or eight months. And so all the verbiage, all the paperwork, it says AOL on it because the Verizon deal hadn't been either announced or completed. Uh, and then probably Verizon was like, yeah, this is still fine. So when all stuff goes out, it still says AOL on it because that deal closed last Tuesday. That's less than a week ago. So it's really, you know, I think just pieces are in motion. I don't think Microsoft would have any problems saying the word Verizon out loud. Um, but this was pretty much an AOL deal. So I'm not too surprised they didn't say, you know, Verizon subsidiary AOL, they just said. AOL itself. So uh, does the move come with uh, layoffs? Does the partnership come with some layoffs? Well, every single person who's leaving Microsoft to, uh, as part of the deal, will have an AOL job offer. So my group is about to get quite a lot larger. Uh, actually, AOL PR reached out to me and was like, your article's wrong. <laughs> Can you correct that? Everyone gets a job offer. So there won't be any layoffs as part of this, which I think is an important thing, because if we were seeing the technology transfer and then people get fired, that would be a very different story. Instead, it's, it's Microsoft essentially handing this off to AOL and saying, Godspeed and go forth, and then also powering their search engine uh, property as well. So it, it's not a mass layoff, it's a mass transfer. All right, so it's part of like the slimming down, the Satya Nadella, we have these objectives, personal computing, cloud platforms, business productivity, uh, everything else, are they gonna, are we gonna see a lot of moves like this? A lot of like slimming down and, you know, spinning off partner parts of- Well, it's, it's two in one day, so you begin to wonder. Um, but then you can ask yourself, what are they going to toss off next? And, you know, I think that given the recent reorg, they jettisoned some very high-profile executives as part of that. That was about two weeks ago. So we're seeing a lot of these moves in quick succession, and so I would not be surprised to see another one. And you can now play the, the Silicon Valley parlor game of what will they sell and guess with your friends. But, I mean, just given the pace and the, the, the messaging they're putting around this, that this is part of an ongoing strategy, implies I think we're going to see more. But, you know, honestly, at this point, there's been enough that I think it's already been a big change without even uh, anything more happening. Uh, right. We're going to get into the um, Microsoft Uber partnership in a second. But um, so personal computing, that includes, I presume, like Xbox and, you know, HoloLens and all that stuff. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, the, the, the PC part of Microsoft is still very, very important. Terry Meyerson, actually, uh, who runs Windows, in the most recent reorg, also picked up hardware. So they're almost bringing those things together. So I think the definition of PC is now essentially anything that runs Windows 10 which is a pretty broad, uh, diverse set of uh, different devices. Uh, any guesses as to what they might be getting rid of next? Uh, I, I try to not make predictions um, unless we're playing Blackjack in Vegas because I tend to be wrong. 
Uh, so I'll, I'll wait and see. But I think if we saw maybe one or two more in the next month or two, it wouldn't be too surprising. The last thing I'll say is that their fiscal year is coming to a close. So if they're going to do a lot of the stuff, they only have so much time left before they have to start a new fiscal year and also a new fiscal quarter. So maybe we're seeing these in quick succession, not because they're trying to move that fast, but because they wanted the paperwork done in this current fiscal uh, 2015 for them. It's just it's a technical point, but it may matter. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So the other big Microsoft news is that Uber acquired part of Bing's mapping assets and that Uber will absorb about 100 Microsoft employees. Uh, yes. These employees are focused on the product's image collection activities, but that, that doesn't really sound what, that's not really what it sounds like. What, what does this mean? No, that's actually a really beautiful point. That, that's my question when I was working on the story was well, what's going on. I think what we're seeing is Uber is dedicated to being a full stack company. They want to own all their tech. They don't want to license it out. They don't want to have to use your stuff. They want to have from top to bottom an Uber service. And frankly, if you want talent and Microsoft wants to shed a little talent, you go to where the talent is. And so they went to Bing. And these are the guys who do the aerial 3D and um, one other form of, uh, of Bing map technology. So they really know how to pull in data and sort it in a map environment, which is frankly a lot of what Uber does. I mean, they're essentially a map that has cars on top of it. So I think... The, the specific division that was released is a little interesting. Maybe we'll see more dynamic uh, aspects of the Uber app itself if they can bring in more data. But I mean, I wasn't shocked by that move. Um, also, Uber is now a $50 billion company. They can afford to buy things. Uh, and so I'm really curious about the uh, the financials of this deal. I could not figure that out uh, by the time I published this morning. So if anyone does know, just let us know because I'm really curious who's paying who and how much. Now, now, you say that Microsoft for a long time has said, we're not going to sell Bing, that's not what we're going to do, but but now even letting a part of it go is noteworthy. Um, so what, why do you think that they're doing that, this particular, why they're letting go of it now? Yeah, no, it's a really good question because there've been, there's been many calls by investors and analysts that Microsoft should sell Bing as a unit. It never made a lot of sense, but keep in mind that Bing is not a search engine. It's the search technology layer that goes across all Microsoft products. And so I think what we're seeing is Microsoft saying, look, we have to have search. You know, it's part of Cortana. It's part of Windows 10. It's really a key part of, you know, their, their software uh, system. But images and maps, is that as core? And so I, they, I think they're willing to slice off a small piece of this uh, while still keeping the larger search property in, intact. I mean, you can't have a modern OS now without search. And so I don't think they're going to go to Google and say, hey, you know, we're going to work together. Um, but it's notable because they've been so adamant about keeping Bing I just don't think they ever said keep it all together at once. And that's kind of what we're seeing in this context. So, so what's the connection between the two stories? I mean, you know, Google is, a, you know, was started out as a search engine, but, you know, they're an ad business. I mean, the ads are a core part of their business. Um, now, with Microsoft letting go of their display ad business, um, what is the connection with Bing? Well, I think the company's overall point is that they just want to do a couple of things very well, as opposed to doing all things, uh, you know, poorly. Um, or not poorly per se, but you know, it's, it's hard to do more stuff when you have a, a single corporate DNA. The old joke is that uh, you know, if your argument answers all questions, it answers none. And I think that a corporation that wants to do all things doesn't do any of them very well. So if you're Satya and you're rebuilding Microsoft for the next 20 years or trying to build a company that will last 20 more years, I think you look around and go, why are they here? And what can we do with them? And so you find a, a good corporate home for them. I mean, AOL and Uber are very financially healthy, stable companies. And so I think that when you still want to have access to the to the, the tools you've built, but you don't want to kind of pay for the continued development, you do this. Um, it's it's risky. It's aggressive. I mean, uh, Danny Sullivan from Surgeon Land Land uh, was really negative on the Uber news because he thinks that uh, giving up any part of mapping technology is a blow to a core competency of Microsoft. And that's the other perspective on this. I don't really have much of a side, per se, on if it's smart or not. But I think that, you know, if you want to redo your corporation, Focus is very important. And the question is, is Satya doing the right thing? Is he letting go of the right assets or the wrong assets? And that's for investors to decide. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. You point out, you know, these aren't just 100 people. These are 100 engineers. And that is, like, that's really important. Um, very you know, much a, important. Yeah, so whether it's a gain for Uber, is that a loss for Microsoft, or is it really a it's, gain? Well, I, it, may not be, it may not be so zero-sum. I think it's definitely a win for Uber. I think it also shows how 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 large they are in terms of what they can they can do. I mean, you don't create 100 engineers and all the associated burn rate and headcount unless you have at least some pretty big aspirations. So I think that for Uber, it's definitely a win. They're getting something that they wanted. Microsoft, on their hand, has to weigh the, the price they get for it against the law's capability. And, you know, I haven't had a lot of luck getting uh, Bing employees to tell me what they think because they're all pretty locked down. But, I mean, I think that Wall Street itself is, is watching this pretty carefully. 
So last week we reported on Project Sidekick, the NASA Microsoft partnership to send uh, partly to send augmented reality goggles, the HoloLens, into space. And over the weekend we heard that the SpaceX rocket carrying the two HoloLens prototypes exploded in space. Will not obviously make it to the International Space Center. Um, there's the explosion right there. Now, do you think is this a big blow to Microsoft? Big PR blow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's that bad. I mean, it, it, first of all, I'm sorry for SpaceX, and I'm sorry the rocket uh, had an anomaly and then they detonated. That's just always really tough. But you know, Satya, the CEO of Microsoft, tweeted out, "Quote like space is hard." I know it's like Barbie, like math is yeah, hard. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? He's right. Space is really, really hard. Um, I think Microsoft is, is bummed to lose two finished uh, HoloLens headsets. I don't know how many there actually are right now in existence that are done. Um, but I mean, they're going to do it again. And when you, when you have like about $80 billion in cash, as Microsoft does, two headsets. And also, they got an entire new news cycle out of it. Um, like we're talking about it right now, right? Yeah. So HoloLens is even more in the uh, out in conversation than it was otherwise. Um, of course, you never want your rocket to explode. You know, I bet they had plans. Um, but I mean, we'll build a new rocket, or they will, and then they'll build new headsets and they'll go up and then it'll still happen. Uh, I'm just very jealous. I want HoloLens. Uh, I've only played with it once, and uh, they didn't let me take it home. So, um, Microsoft, if you want to do three, I'll take the uh, the third one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a funny. It's not a funny story. You're right. It's sad, but you know, all these they've they've exploded a lot. You know, they they can't <laughs> land them, and so you know, it's like we want to feel bad about something that was in it. You know, thank goodness they're not they're unmanned. Um, yeah. But yeah, like all oh, those poor Hololens, and yeah. Well, importantly, there's enough uh, resources on the uh, International Space Station to keep the crew alive for a couple of a uh, couple of months. So this is not like an emergency. So we, we're bringing light of it a little bit, but keep in mind that everyone's safe. Um, right. It's just a very expensive day uh, for NASA, SpaceX, and also Microsoft. Exactly. Well, Alex, thank you so much. Alex Wilhelm is a writer at TechCrunch. Uh, is there anything else you're working on that you're allowed to talk about? Uh, I well, uh, I can't. No, can't tell you. Sorry. <laughs> You'll see tomorrow morning. Okay. Well, you can see it first by probably uh, going to techcrunch.com or at Alex on Twitter. Indeed, thanks. Always right. fun. <laughs> thanks, Alex. Take care. See you guys. Coming up, solar planes and algorithm tweaks. But first, this episode is brought to you by Braintree, code for easy online payments. If you're a mobile app developer, check out Braintree. Braintree is the payment solution used by companies like Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, and Munchree. Braintree has made the payment experience in these apps seamless and magical, and now you can add a similar experience to your own app. With excellent customer service and simple integration, Braintree gets you ready to receive payments quickly. And Braintree's continuous support plus fast payouts means you'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth. Braintree is helping solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering a best-in-class mobile checkout experience. Check it out for yourself. Braintree gives you a full-stack payment solution, support for all payment types your customers might want. Start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more all with a single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transaction fee free, go to braintreepayments.com slash tech night. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. This month we learned that federal employee personnel records from the Office of Personnel Management had been hacked and highly sensitive information had been compromised. This information has been vulnerable since 2013 when hackers stole the credentials of an employee working on a project. The specific details that hackers might have obtained was information the U.S. government collected for the very reason of knowing what could be held against a person in exchange for giving away secrets and now that information has probably been leaked to hackers. Today, the Office of Personnel Management posted an alert on their site claiming that they will temporarily suspend the program it uses to complete background investigations until they have strengthened their security. In related news, Recode reports that famed security researcher Peter Zatko, who goes by the name Mudge, announced that he is leaving Google and heading for the White House. In a twit tweet, Mudge says he plans to create a cyber underwriters laboratory, a sort of agency that will evaluate cyber software and hardware products for their security capabilities. Facebook's new photo uploader for iOS will include text overlays and swipeable filters, looking a lot like Snapchat. And in other Facebook news, if you want to keep seeing videos of goats in pajamas in your Facebook feed, all you have to do is turn up the volume on the video. Earlier this month, Facebook announced that they'd tweak the news feed algorithm to take into account how much time you spent on a story in order to show you more stories like that. Now they have tweaked the algorithm again to account for whether you turned up the volume on a video. Now this can be helpful if you turn the volume up on a news story that might be sad or horrific or otherwise not make you want to like it. 
At the same time, you might still want Facebook to know that you're interested in the topic and want to see more stories like it. Other actions that will tell Facebook you're interested in the topic include making the video full screen and enabling high definition. This feature is rolling out over the next few weeks. It's a great way for Facebook to fine tune your newsfeed and a great way for them to learn more and more about what we are all willing to watch and ultimately pay for. And finally, the BBC reports that a solar powered plane is attempting a record breaking flight across the Pacific Ocean. The single seater aircraft left Japan on Sunday and has now passed the point of no return. The goal is to reach Hawaii in five days. The total solar powered trip is 8,200 kilometers or approximately 5,095 miles. Thanks to Mike Rogers for emailing me about the discussion I had last week with Steve Kovac about iMessage haters. Mike writes, I for one like iMessage. It's really great if you have terrible cell coverage at home. It will grow, go through Wi-Fi. Zello is great for that too. I really like the fact that you can see if it's delivered and read. And great for my friends in Canada who don't pay for text but can iMessage. Thanks for the message, Mike. If you have feedback, we always love to hear it. You can write to me at megan at twit.tv or write to the show at tn2 at twit.tv. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the audio or the video version of the show at twit.tv slash tn2. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.